And they, they didn't want it. Nobody was really interested in helping these people. But do, do you really think that Obama could have gotten that through Congress? To, to like do serious yeah because the pressure is more there's more on pressure debt. on Congress than on the administration the administration's got four years Congress is, Congress has to look like they're harder on the banks than yeah. they really are they have to you know if there's public outrage at the banks yeah, yeah. Congress has to act like they're outraged at the banks that's so, why so you think that not, not all of them Democrats obviously would have been able to overcome a Republican filibuster there were a lot of Republicans no that's the problem there were a lot of Republicans on board Senator Grassley said uh, mm. Shipley I think it's like there are Republicans who are I mean a lot of the people it's pretty much Congressmen who are hard on Wall Street, and you know, I say hard, but it's really it's you know people who do their job and people who aren't pawns for Wall Street. Right. Th it's pretty much 50-50 party wise. I mean, as much as I won't like different Republicans' views on different things, a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of them will be I, real I, hard yeah, on just, Wall I Street. Just, I disagree with you on all of that. I don't think that that kind of what, what about passed. Chuck Schumer? The f Schumer, this this c c he's he's because this this is who elects him. I would have met him too. <laughs> that guy. I met him. That guy. Shook his hand. He's such a shill for Wall Street because that's his constituency. I mean, you ever want to see anyone bend over backwards and show their ass to some investment bank, dude? Call up Chuck Schumer. He'll bend over as soon as you could say, you know, dial the number for my campaign finance committee. <laughs> yeah. So is, in is is in Occupy done complaining about Wall Street yet? No, I'm just getting started, man. So this is in only my one. what maybe closing remarks. I don't know. I heard a theme earlier, but I, I just I really wanted to give a shout out for the uh, for the Dodd Frank bill. One of the things <laughs> that hasn't been brought up tonight is the Consumer Finance Pro uh, Financial Protection Bureau. Yeah, yeah they won't even is, let Elizabeth Warren. Well, be so that here's the thing: trying. Obama let Elizabeth Warren design it. And then Republicans were all like, well, we're not going to let her run it. So then he appointed somebody else, and Elizabeth Warren pulled the perfect gotcha move, and she went and ran for Senate and won, and, and kicked out a Republican in the process. But he, uh, so gotcha. he, here's the thing. Banks don't give a yeah. fuck. The Banks are still like, we won. <laughs> Ted Kennedy seat. Woo! What an accomplishment for Democrats. <laughs> so anyway, the Consumer Finance, Financial Protection Bureau is uh, is looking to be what will be a really powerful agency when it comes to confronting I'm the banks sure. and when it comes to protecting consumers against all the kinds of crazy things that banks are able to get away with in this country but they don't get away with in other countries when it comes to just totally ripping people off in ways that are heinous and disgusting in ways that many of you have mentioned here tonight. So I just wanted to give a shout out we'll to see, Dodd we'll Frank see how that and the Consumer out. Financial we'll Protection Bureau. Well, you know, it's going to depend on the people who run it and what it is that the people who run it what they do it's going to depend on the consumers to get the to take their grievances to the politicians and get somebody behind them that's what it's going to take yeah we're going to have to reoccupy wall street with 10 times more people and that, but but you're going to have to reoccupy wall street with bankers who actually people who know the jobs and people who can academics. actually academics yeah exactly academics and econ economists who are who are going to be vocal and express what you all have not been so uh, um, eloquent in expressing? <laughs> yeah, you know, to we say the least. Eloquent. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's just saying, you know, you know. You know, it's, just because we drop a couple f bombs doesn't mean I'm not eloquent. Yeah, but you know, you know, it gives the people to say uh, on the news. It was like Occupy. Hey, Atlanta. Timothy Geithner swears yeah. all the time. He's go ahead, f him oh, up, oh, dude. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he, he does. does. He does, but he does it behind closed doors without cameras there. Yeah, yeah, of course. He doesn't just go to a press conference like regulation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, that's what. <laughs> that's what that's what you can paraphrasing. Yeah, he does. But all right. So I guess I guess this is about the end of our program. So I'll give us uh, closing remarks. The Occupy guy will shut his damn mouth about the banks. Finally, you can all go back to your sleepy little lives, being robbed comfortably. All you goddamn pawns, you peasants, <laughs> you're just feudal serfs. All right, see that now. <clears throat> <laughs> when, the, when when Congress was arguing about about bank bailouts and everything, and you know helping homeowners and everything through this whole crisis, one term that kept coming coming up was moral hazard. Reason why we shouldn't bail out. I mean, this is everyone from Treasury Secretary, Congressman, brought this up as a reason not to bail out homeowners. Because you know how is it fair? You're just rewarding bad economic behavior. And moral hazard is a situation where a party will have a tendency to take risks because the cost that could incur will not be felt by the party taking that risk now people i heard this applied to homeowners so much moral hazard moral hazard so you can't bail out homeowners because of moral hazard 
What? What the? This is exactly what the banks did. This is exactly more hazard. Is it's, it's it's like the last 15 years of the financial industry in this country. This is exactly what they did. This is what derivatives are. This is these these they making the bets, making the fees, making the money, getting the bonuses, not going to jail, and then getting bailed out to the tunes of oh, trillions and trillions of dollars. I mean, it's disgusting. How, how else are you going to end this? Revolt. I don't know. Take the streets. I don't know. Vote. I don't know. What, what do we do, Bridgemont? Where do we go from here? What do we do? We make noise. We keep, we keep on at it. We don't give up. We don't settle for it, you know. And, you know, you said that some of us, most of us are pawns where... You know, you don't have to be a pawn. You can be a rook or a knight. <laughs> so, you know, make them, you know, the way the system is structured. And the only way to advance in this structure is to be aware of it. And, you know, play your pieces accordingly. Because if, you know, you make friends with the right people, you will not be victimized as much. I mean, it's sad to say, but it is the way of our world, and it's the way it always has been, and upon some so you're Marxist the revolution, <laughs> the you're upon some Marxist revolution, this is the way it's going to be. You're saying the solution is to go get all chummy with someone from Goldman Sachs? Uh, or somebody who's Finance. Still, still. Finance. I mean, as long, as, long as, our, I mean, as long as our, as long as our, I, mean, I gotta look out for mine. I got, I got kids, you know. I'm saying it's the only way. It's the only way. I mean, all all these muffled voices. Rich man, I don't mean to crush your uh, dreams, but dude, you'd get security would have you out the door before you got into the it first does, floor. It, 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 it starts somewhere small. You meet somebody who meets somebody who knows somebody look, who this knows is somebody. why you're all involved in the Democratic Party. You want to get <laughs> <laughs> you got aspirations to get chummy with somebody. I don't know what you're talking about. JJ <laughs> Dinner. Yeah, exactly. You gotta do these things. You have to. You have to put on the suit and smile, and, and sell your charm if you don't have any money. You know? <laughs> sell your charm. Use what you dignity. got to get what you want to have. Or, or you can realize that our whole economy and financial industry is in a precarious situation where we don't even know what's going on. It's, we're being propped up by taxpayer money. Our own money is propping up these giant criminal banks that have screwed us for short, years. Short of armed revolution, what do we do? Short of armed revolution. I mean, armed awareness. revolution... We raise awareness that we need to break up the big banks. There's there's a leg a new legislative Let's effort. See, out. I don't even think it's. But we have to raise that awareness. I don't think that's enough. We got to end the plutocracy because that's what it comes down to. You can deal hey. with the banks five years down the road. Five. Plutocracy is gonna have those same loopholes back in. Plutocracy. To, as, if you don't end the plutocracy, but you, you can't stop anything. But if it's gonna put, come back. You're, you it's only banks, a band aid. If you put the banks down to a small size, like maybe balance sheets of two hundred billion or something, then you can sue them. Did you say balance sheets of two hundred billion? You can. Is sue that them. what you say? Yes. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. I yes. think some. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't. Hundred billion. Whatever. But if you break up the big banks, get them small, you can prosecute them. You can actually have justice in this country again. How many banks uh, would would that we break up banks and that's gonna leave? That's like fifty damn banks being created. If you break it up the the, the major banks and you put them to what you say assets well, of two hundred million. 200 billion 200 billion 200 billion I mean I've seen those numbers thrown around serious people like uh, Simon Johnson is big on this he's a uh, he's got a good blog baseline scenario uh, former chief economist for the IMF and he's over at MIT now he writes extensively on this topic and that's why he supported uh, John Huntsman for the Republican candidacy because that was the only Republican that understood that we needed to break up the big I want to find who is this socialist who you're going to find to do this that's what I'm, <laughs> I'm who, saying who are these socialists because that's what they're going to say that's the first thing they're going to say look uh, we have we have momentum General Attorney General Holder just pretty much got up in public and said it. No, I know it took six years. It's ridiculous, <laughs> but like, it's a it's a it's a process. And if we're not ready to fight for our rights to have justice in this country, then just roll over and give up. But we need to raise awareness that we have to break up the big banks. But don't think that just because you roll over, everything's going to be fine. Just yeah, you, well, have, you might not have a police baton on your head, but we'll see if you have a house five, ten years down the road. We'll see if this country's got much of a future. I mean... We don't. We don't know what's going. These banks don't even know what's going on in their own balance sheets. They hide stuff. They regulators don't know. Don't care. 
don't want to know, not smart enough to find out, too corrupt to really care because they got faith in the institutions that they came from. And the institutions they're going to go back to making six, seven figure incomes when they get done with our government because that's how plutocracy works, revolving door. So when you say get rid of the plutocracy, did you did you have like a subscription for that? Like, I mean, not entirely, but I mean, there's a I lot mean, of a, things a we can do. Prescription for that? I mean, prohibiting revolving door syndrome is one. But I mean, this is a whole episode in itself, and so I well, think we should one save One thing this. about the nature of plutocracy: once one plutocracy ends, it lays the seeds down for another to rise. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, that's see, you can always bring that up, but. It, if you want a government that's not corrupt, a government that works for the people, the people have to always be vigilant. People can't just be like, oh, we had our we had a reform, yeah, our right. revolution, have, now everything to, is good. We have no, to the people got to stay on yep. the ball. Like, it's got to be a cultural shift where the people stay on top of their government like they're supposed to be all the time. Because the people give their government any, any leeway to get away from, you know, a democracy, it'll just go running. It'll go running towards big money interests. It'll go running towards whoever's got the most bombs or whatever, whatever that historical and geographical context is. Gives Look, whoever the most power. We, got, we, we just have to work towards a more perfect union, and we'll, all, and we'll always have to do that because we're human, and our society will never be perfect. We'll never reach a utopia, so we're always going to need people to people. to get out here and make noise and and fight united for the rights. We'll never be defeated. The people united will never be. Defeated.